At the end of the last video, our computer looked like this. We could read any address in memory, and we could write to any address in memory. We even ran a really simple program. If you're building along with us, by the end of this video, you'll have a fully functioning Z80 computer. In this video, we'll be using one breadboard, one 74HC74, two push buttons, two one kilo ohm resistors. In the last video, I left you with this. Did you work out what was behind the pink blob? Mashed potato! <laughs> no, not mashed potato. My mum! No, it definitely wasn't that. Um, and actually my favourite drink is, is not even Coke, it's called Mexican Coke. Because um, you get it, it's, it's special Coke. Rishi, are you really still talking about Coke? Okay, you can get Mexican Coke, it tastes amazing, and I thoroughly recommend it, but only, only one a week. I thought I told you. Get in the bin. Anyone else? No? Okay, here you go. There's the answer. Couple of OR gates, an AND gate, and an inverter. But for the circuit we're making today, we don't actually need this inverter, so let's get rid of it. Now all we need to do is make the run and run bar signals. How are we going to do that then? Well, we're going to use this circuit here. Let's not go through how it works just yet. Let's build it first. Because building stuff is more fun than explaining stuff. We've done a lot of these step by step now. I think you can handle this one on your own. So let's just listen to some music and watch the human man build. That human man, he's only gone and made a mistake, but he didn't realise he made a mistake, see? And he spent an embarrassingly long time trying to figure it out. Let's just motor through that quick. Finally, human man. That took hours. He'd only gone and put it in the wrong one, hadn't he? Uh, I'll cover it down with bird flu. I'll do my best to power through the rest of this video. Hopefully it still makes sense. So, what happens when we press the run button then? Well, when we press the run button, we set this D-type flip-flop here, which pulls the Q-bar line low. So on this second D-type flip-flop, this activates the preset feature. So the run line goes high and the run bar line goes low. And if we look at the data sheet, it doesn't actually matter what the clock signal or data signals are doing for the whole time the preset signal is pulled low. So it doesn't matter how many M1 cycles the Z80 goes through. And then when we press the stop button, this clears the first flip-flop, which puts a one back on the Q bar output, which then allows this second D-type flip-flop to be clocked by the M1 signal which returns the run signal back to a zero and the run bar signal back to a one. And that's it. Some maniac has just kicked our door in and given us this conundrum. 
It's a good thing we've got a computer now, isn't it? So let's translate this into Z80 talk. So what we got here is load register A with the value 2. Next, we've got load register B with value 3. And then we've got add the contents of register A to the contents of register B. And the answer, that gets shoved back in register A. But we can't actually see the answer yet because we can't directly read the contents of the A register. So we have to take the value from the A register and put it somewhere in memory so we can see it using the examine function of the computer. So for that, we're going to use this instruction here. Load NNA. And what this does is loads the contents of the A register into the memory location NN. And for absolutely no reason whatsoever, let's put the answer in address 9. So our little program loads 2 into the A register and then loads 3 into the B register, adds the two together, and then puts the answer in memory address 9. The only problem is, once the Z80's finished doing this, it's just going to go off on one. It's just going to keep on doing whatever random instructions are in the RAM. So we won't actually know when this is finished. But luckily, the good folks at Zilog gave us this. The halt instruction. And what the halt instruction does is it stops the Z80 from doing anything. Well, it does no ops, but we don't care about them. So if we add the whole instruction here, at the end of the program, as soon as the result is loaded into memory, the Z80 will just stop what it's doing. We also have this handy halt signal coming from the ZAE, which tells us when the halt instruction has been executed. So we can stick an LED on there and we'll know when it's finished. Alright, we're nearly ready to solve our problem. And we better be quick about it. Because that lunatic that's broken in, he's only gone and drunk a washing up bowl full of coke. Oh, oh, total coke addict. addict. Coca-Cola <laughs> addict, yeah. And now he's buzzing. So what we need to do is convert this assembly language into machine code. Which is this. Now we can program our computer, and then we can hopefully find the answer. So 2 plus 3 equals 5. Who would have thought that, eh? So there you are. A fully functioning Z80 computer. So what's the future for our little pooty then, eh? Well, if all you wanted was a really basic functioning Z80 computer, well, you've got that already. And if you wanted to, you could make it more compact by putting this over here and this over here. But me and the human man, we're going to keep going and build the extra functions to make it just like the real Altair. 
So we'll be making the examine function, the deposit next function, and the single step function. But we'll leave it there for a few weeks. That way, you lot can have a go at building them first. Here's a clue to get you started. And then making a few alterations to the examine next function we made, you could make the examine function. As an extra hint, use the slow clock and put some LEDs on the control signals. That makes it way easier to see what's going on. A viewer from the last video asked if I would do some memory decoding. So here you go. This simple circuit here splits the memory space into two bits. So you can have some memory in the first 32K and some memory in the second 32K. I'm not going to go through in detail how it works because this cold is kicking my little budgie bum and I'll probably make more mistakes than usual. But I will go through it in the next video we do on the computer. If you ain't worked it out by now, me and that human man are a couple of idiots. So if we can make this hodgepodge of wires and chippies and breadies work, I think you can too. So don't just sit there. Like some vast slug. Build your own little pooty. This video's over now. Go away.